What's up, everyone? How's it going? Welcome to the second anomaly stream. Thank you so much for tuning in. It means a ton. What up? Um, I'm having a little bit of trouble with my scene and an animation uh, remotes. So thank you so much for subscribing. Uh, so I'm going to be a little bit slower today on that end. Going to switch uh, between keyboards and stuff, but it should be smooth still. So let's have some fun today. Let me just test this real quick. There you go. The Discord link. Bruh. Bruh. All right. And. The applause. And the explosion. All right. Um, yeah. So if you're new to this, uh, my name is Nico. I play keys and uh, I make beats as Anomaly. And this is basically the second time I'm doing this. So this is all still very new for me. Uh, a huge thanks to everyone who's tuning in today, but also a huge thanks to everyone who tuned in for the first stream uh, last Thursday. It was a lot of fun. Uh, this is basically a place where I make beats for you guys uh, in real time. I try to come up with new ideas. And the whole idea behind this is basically to sort of like create this contrast between what you see elsewhere online, uh, where like you'll get like extremely prepared and arranged stuff, uh, which is just how I usually like try to create this stuff, It's it heavily contributes to basically the anomaly sound. Uh, but on stream, you'll see, me, you'll see me like make mistakes and take from like two to 20 takes to get something right. And you know, this is all about that stuff, basically an inside view on my inner oak flow. So it should be pretty fun. Uh, regarding the first stream, uh, a couple of things went wrong. Overall, it was very fun, but my alerts uh, froze on screen and the on-screen chat froze for the whole thing. So. I can see so far they're working here, so it, it, it's a huge upgrade on, on last time. So thank you for being patient. If there's anything that goes wrong, uh, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to fix it. But I think it's it's working so far. Thank you so much to everyone who's following and subscribing. Um, and basically for last time, I, I kind of watched like the replay afterwards to try to see like what, what, what like what I was missing. And, you know, like it's still very new for me to like try to be super focused and in my zone for the beat making, which is the mindset I'm usually in when I do this stuff, but still like go back to like get your questions and stuff. Uh, so I, I guess this is something I'm gonna progressively get better at as more streams happen and stuff. Uh, so thank you for being understanding and uh, patient, but feel free to ask me any questions. I'm, I'm gonna try to keep up with the chat action and uh, try to answer your questions as best as I can. If um, for some reason, I'm like super in the zone for like 15 or 20 minutes straight and I forget to answer something. Uh, please feel free to send stuff uh, in the Discord afterwards. So hop at uh, anomalybeats.com slash Discord and uh, you're going to be able to send me anything you want and also claim your preset pack. So if you uh, subscribe to the Twitch channel, uh, you basically you basically get a preset pack for that month. So I'm going to make like 12 packs uh, every year. Uh, so you get 15 presets that I made uh, for a synth. This month it's uh, OBXD. Uh, you get 15 loops or riffs made with those 15 patches. And you get uh, 15 MIDI files that correspond to each of those loops. Uh, OBXD is basically, it's a free VST, uh, but it has like an optional $50 price tag, which I really recommend. Um, doing because if you enjoy the synth because it sounds really really great um and uh if if you guys can like ask for a specific synth if you want like some dext or serum or atmosphere and i'll try to make that happen for the next preset packs depending on uh whatever you guys ask oh dude insta hit twitch partner i i hope so but uh i mean just the fact that we're here together and hanging is amazing hello from korea Oh, what's up? I, I guess this is like a pretty good time slot because compared to the 7 p.m. one on Thursday, I guess like more people from different places can tune in. So that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, I guess uh, last thing, just going over last stream, uh, I know like I missed a lot of stuff and there, <laughs> everyone was super nice. I know there was like a lot of really cool comments. It, it means so much. Uh, there was just like this one salty guy who said I was like in celebrity mode for being focused on my beats. Like, bruh. Okay, like I will be super welcoming to everyone who comes to hang in the uh, in the streams, uh, but like, take it easy, D don't be salty. Uh, that being said, if that guy uh, comes back in the stream today, which I would kind of be surprised by by the way he was acting in the chat, but 
welcome back. I hope you <laughs> enjoy the series. Ah, uh, all right. So we're gonna start this and um, have some fun. Uh, I'm just gonna check the levels real quick. So. Is this good? Can you hear the piano compared to the microphone? Wonderful. Uh, piano real quick. And some drums. Very Chris. Oh, dude, I'm happy you guys like the animations. I put a lot of uh, emotion and time into it. It wasn't that long, but I think like the sort of like little spin thing is pretty fun. Uh, what was the VST called? So um, I chose OBXD as the first. Um, uh, I chose OBXD as the first synth for the first preset pack. So if you want to head into Discord, you'll have a link for everything to download that synth to get the preset pack and everything. Uh, it's a free VST that's based on the legendary Oberheim, uh, the OBX, which is just one beast of a synth. Um, but then again, you can ask me. Um, anything you want. If there's like one specific synth uh, that you want for a next preset, I will make it happen. Um, whoever set your Twitch up did a great job. Thank you. I, I actually did it. So I, it's still a work in progress. Um, if there's stuff that doesn't work, I will try to fix it as best as I can. But so far, I think it's cool. Uh, piano view. Yes. So last time I know someone asked for like an on-screen meter roll. So I, I was gonna make it happen today, but I actually need one more cable to make it happen. So I ordered it and I promise it, uh, I promise that by uh, Thursday streams, it should be all set. So I just need to like route some media to send it in the streaming computer so that you get the role that's separated from my uh, studio view uh, and it should be all good. Uh, studio tour. I mean, I can quickly, once we like get the speed started and maybe like get a cool eight bar idea, I can definitely like take you through some of of these, but if you want to check um, a gear list, you can basically see um, everything that I use, almost everything that I use to make sounds and make music in a studio with like VSTs and hardware, that kind of stuff. Uh, that being said, if you have any specific questions regarding like a patch that I'm using, uh, you can ask anytime during the stream, uh, the stream, but I can also like drop uh, screenshots in the Discord uh, after the fact. So it should be very fun. All right. So I already got like this little um, drum kit to get started. So I use addictive drums a lot. I think it's really, really cool because you get like all of these different uh, percussion instruments or like a lot of different snare models, kick models, and that sort of stuff. It's very, very fun. So I have like this huge uh, routing thing going on where the kick, snare, and hats are going like in separate outputs. So I can each treat them like individually within Ableton and they're all side chain to, to kick and snare. And then like the rest, Tom symbols and all that is going in the drum channel. And the way I'm doing this is like, I'll have a group in Ableton where you get like the addictive VST, but then it's also stacked with a drum rack. So on my push, I get like, these are all like the addictive kit pieces, but I can stack samples in the drum rack window. So it's all like, on one pad. What's up, Anthony? Make some noise for Anthony Pajot, the anomaly live drummer. So happy to see you here, bro. And uh, foot pedal. Oh yes, the foot pedal. All right, so this is like a two cam setup, as you can see, uh, which I think is pretty fun. Um, I mean, so far I've been only using like a sustain pedal, uh, which I don't know like how interesting it would be to actually see that on stream but I could definitely get like the expression pedal one <laughs> if you're really down for that, but yeah.
Yeah, we played uh, Electric Forest um, a year and a half ago, I think. Maybe Anthony can correct me. I, th I think it was a year and a half ago. First percussion of the day is the spoons. All right, so these are literally metal spoons uh, like put together, but this is actually usually like it's the traditional music instrument uh, is like two wooden spoons. And then you'll do like, And then you'll have like dun, 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 over it. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. But um, what I've done with this is I'll like do something like this on any object in my room, and then treat it with the frequency shifter in Ableton to get uh, a cool different texture. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just basically <laughs> hitting it like on the on the mic stand. It's it's I know it's not like the most uh, lovely texture ever made, but what you, you what you can do after. So how it sounds. I'll remove some lows. Shift that shit with the frequency shifter, and then like a reverb or delay or something. Maybe a reverb. Thank you for subscribing. Yeah, Supermassive is really cool and it's free to, it's like, it's mostly a delay, but there's certain modes where it almost sounds like a, a reverb because an algorithmic reverb is basically a bunch of tiny delays. Um, but I really like the, the native echo from the Ableton. It sounds really good and it's modeled like on a, an actual like analog unit. So you can get like the pitch drops and, and uh, effects sort of thing from messing around with the delay time. Mm -hmm. Hey, what up, Maxwell? Everyone makes some noise for Maxwell. Thank you so much for tuning in, bro. I would have used my applause sound, but since my current 
shortcut thing isn't working. I don't know what the shortcut is. So <laughs> let's manually applause Maxwell. What a legend. Maxwell in the stream. All right, Juno. Special uh, sustain note to create some ambience. Petit bonjour depuis la France. Salut les Français, s'il y en a d'autres dans le chat. Yeah, so Juno for the texture, and so far this is OBXD. This is one of the patches from the, the Twitch Shop preset pack. I called it Teddy Bear Pad, because I guess it's like... It feels very warm, at least. And I got peanut butter cords, too. This is with the reverb on, Ben. Kind of like this texture and it's it's like a little bit saturated which like gives some grit to it and then you got like these more like like cute sort of plucks things um where can we find it over behind patches again so 
right here in the Discord. So once you're subbed, you head to the Discord, you link your account to uh, your Twitch account, and then you should get access to the sub-only channels uh, to download your preset pack. Yeah, for sure. People asking about how to load the presets, uh, just head in the in the Discord, and I'll answer all of your uh, questions after the stream. Uh, meanwhile, you can also ask other people who've downloaded it, and there's an extensive README file that um, basically explains every step. Um, oh yeah. If I use any quantize, uh, very rarely. So as you can see, I'm like just nudging the notes to like manually adjust whatever I recorded if I messed up which happens pretty much <laughs> every take. Um, but yeah, um, I won't, I very rarely like just select a bunch of notes and use like one eighth or one sixteenth. What's up Robin?
I missed the spoons. Oh no, he missed the spoons. I'll play it back, don't worry. Oh yeah, so I guess you guys can't see this part of the screen, but let me bring it down a little bit so you can see. Yeah, so <laughs> since uh, both my comp my produ production computer and the streaming PC are in the same room, I can't really afford to like have it in a separate room. There's some noise in my room. It's like not horrible, but there is some. So whenever I I want to track vocals or talk box or that sort of thing, I have like a mini booth. Uh, which I'll use and I'll usually like twist it around and have like a blanket behind me. So it's, it's like better uh, but for percussion like this on the stream where all I really want is like the transients and maybe like a bit of release. And at that point, like the added noise, if, if I want to keep it for some reason, is not like too, too much like of a, of a pain. Um, I'll use like the warp and um, have it on transient mode. And then you can just like, I guess it might be like, hard to hear on stream but i'll just bring this way down and it'll basically like cut uh the the excess noise in the release it, it like just keeps the transient so it's very very nice to quickly remove um unnecessary information or like i guess percussion or stuff that's like very transient heavy specifically Yeah, this is not necessarily like a, a frequency I would usually remove from a clap, but because I'm stacking them, I kind of want to prioritize um, that range on these ones. Background noise, uh, just just in my room. So um, since I have like two computers running, um, even though like my mic is quite far from them, I there's like like a um, constant background noise and. Like for percussive stuff, basically what I just showed you guys allows me to remove that pretty easily. But like if it was vocals, it could be like very not cool to have that. Yeah, it, exactly. It could be like a fan noise. But in my case, it's really just a computer noise because outside of that, my room is pretty quiet. But uh, you notice it as soon as like I want something to be like, I don't know, like held notes or that sort of thing. Um, so for vocals, I switch to like the blanket and uh, booth setup. Um 
What computer do you have? Yeah, that's actually not in the gear list. I should add it. I'm I'm using like a 2015 uh, MacBook Pro for production. Um, I, I've been wanting to upgrade for some time, but it's a little bit of a weird period for um, for upgrading with like the upcoming uh, ARM-based uh, Macs. But we can discuss about it in Gear Talk <laughs> in the in the Discord. No, I, I, I guess like uh, Craig says, I don't hear much background noise. I know it's very subtle. Like on stream, I'm sure you can hear it. But uh, if I want an element to be like really, really be in the front, especially vocals, you would hear it like right away on the claps. I'm, it's a transient, so I can very easily like uh, change it. I just forgot what my <laughs> intro riff was. I think my, oh, that's actually a MIDI controller. I need to deactivate that. <laughs> yep. Let's change that right away. Uh... Yeah. Ah, thank you so much, uh, OTT, for a sh doing a shout out to the reverb video. Yeah, so for a very in-depth video about my life setup, go on YouTube and remember the spoons and check out uh, the life setup. It's it's uh, very nerdy and I go very intense geek mode, but it's a lot of fun. It's a like complete Ableton life setup for uh, the Anomaly Live um, life setup, basically. Thank you. 
So the frequency shifter is honestly my favorite like just effect from Ableton. It's so useful. Yes, um, so someone's asking about, um, oh wait, sorry. So what's your reason for recording the audio of the patch rather than the media? Is it for fidelity processing? I guess in this case, thank you for subscribing. Uh, I guess I just don't need the media in this case because I'm just using it like for a transition. It's coming from the reface, um, but everything is linked in MIDI from the A88. Um, I can control the Juno, the montage, the reface. Um, so in certain cases, I think on the first stream, I was like tracking some Juno just track the the MIDI here and then w while the media was playing I'll like go back to Ju the the Juno and mess around with like the 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 filter cutoff or like the the noise or whatever so that's where I guess it's pretty useful but outside of that if I don't need a MIDI specifically for like transition effects I'll, I'll just go audio right away Maybe not the last note, but 
It works. Yeah, and it's cool. tune extremely organic and natural maybe like not exactly on pitch but <laughs> it works cancel anomaly dude <gasps> i am shocked i am shocked Much love to you too. You do make your drums with addictive drums to your samples. Um, yeah, I guess so. I make like, um, 
I guess like every week or so, I make like a, a couple of like uh, kit presets within Addictive Jumps, but they also include like my actual routing in Ableton. So I use like the kit pieces, I'll mess around with the tuning, the pitch envelope, and then have like different EQ saturation and compressor settings uh, in this. So I guess so far, uh, like most of the kit is addictive. And then you have like my audio claps here, one sample clap, one sample roll, and th this uh, sample for, for the fill here. So I usually end up like stacking them. Um, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I use it with drum rack so that it's, it's all like the same push instrument so I can play around with all of it at the same time. In certain cases, like the claps, I'll just record it over it. I think this space fits the mood, but I usually try to figure out my progression harmonically before, except if like the whole riff is the line, then it'll work. But in this case, I think I'm going more like. Uh, can you talk about line creation at some point? You're so tasteful. Ah, oh, thanks so much, man. Um, I guess like, Mm. It's like, uh, I, I never have a clear answer for for a question like that, I'll, I'll, although it's a very good uh, question. Um, I guess like, because I, okay, <laughs> I'll answer with with a, with a like another answer for another question, but I, I kind of kind of links up with that. So um, like a lot of people ask about like my chord movements or harmony, but for me, it's always about like the voice leading and just melody overall. So whether it's like the, the bass line or like the, the chord movement, I'll, I'll always prioritize uh, voice leading, which is a melody. So as far as like coming up with lines, I don't know, ex exploring stuff. Um, and basically my one answer to almost every question is transcribe because <laughs> transcriptions are the answer to, to like just evolving as a musician, whatever you play, do create, whether you play an instrument or not. Um, transcribing can mean like, getting a solo and learning it on your instrument transcribing can mean uh reverse engineering a sound to like transcribe that sound and get better at it uh well i don't know if maxwell is still in the chat but i was so impressed because you were um actually replicating like this uh biggie song and like shazam recognized it as the original which is like okay you succeeded <laughs> at replicating it that's that to me like is also uh transcribing and that was actually mind-blowing uh that's some next level shit um 
And I remember at one of your master classes, you mentioned that it all starts with a genuine idea to not force anything. Yeah, I mean, at some point when you've actually like st you started your idea and it's already like heading into a certain direction, that's where it can get like a little bit tricky and where I, I, at least personally, I feel um, that like taking a break or sleeping on an idea can be very beneficial because like you'll find something that flows with it. But that's where I don't know, like it, it's a really fine line forcing an outcome and letting it, letting it flow like it's not black and white it's very gray where like if you've already started a direction and you want it you want it to make sense you don't want to force it but you still want to make it so that it continues what you started which i don't know you kind of you got to like follow whatever you're feeling at at the moment i guess who taught you music theory um so i started um piano my, my mom is a piano teacher so like i was very fortunate to get introduced to the instrument and just music overall through her as a like a a bambino a little kid um and then at seven i i got like an actual dedicated teacher that wasn't uh, my mom and i started like music theory lessons like at the same time um and then i guess i get i got like really deep into theory uh like in late high school and then i i, I went to jazz school so i, I was like really Uh, deep into that I don't know if I'll keep this <laughs> the vocal line it was fun to do let's duplicate the teddy bear pad and remove the reverb or like dial it in dial it in my bad rc20 gang anyone this is like so what a beautiful teal uh beautiful tool It's the octave bend. Pretty nice. Um, before going into books and all that, there are a lot of free resources online for learning. Yes, dude, of course. Um, I mean, YouTube is, thank you for subscribing. What's up? Um, YouTube is like the most beautiful thing of like the, the current era that we're living in. I feel like it's such an exciting time to like learn music and learn beat making or anything related to music. Like there's so many resources and so many tutorials and all. Um, I saw someone that has snarky pupil as a username. I think that's very, very nice. What, a, what an amazing wordplay. 
Um, but yeah, just watch tutorials, um, at whatever level you are. There's so much great stuff out there. I guess for, for like Ableton specifically, I really uh, recommend uh, watching Mr. Bill stuff. It's so cool. He's like an Ableton master and it's it's like relatively easy to follow. And I know easy is relative. Like he, he goes into very complex stuff, but like he's a very good um, teacher. Mod me on the chords like some Amber. Yes. Ah, oh, dude. Amber is such a legend. Oh yes, while we're on this, so I said that like the, the main goal of like this Twitch stream was like to show the the process and like just my how I come up with ideas and stuff. But I was obviously very inspired by like all of these amazing musicians and artists that are already doing doing the, the Twitch stuff. Uh, and they've been doing it for, for like a while earlier this year in, in many cases or, or even before that. So I'm very new and late to this thing, but it's a lot of fun. So huge shout out to, to just um, name a few inspirations i'm obviously forgetting some names but i think kenny beats is like a legend for a lot of people he's he's like he led the way for a lot of people with this new uh, streaming thing and then uh homies and peers like super inspired and it's so amazing to watch like Kiefer, matty j bad snacks uh decap do their thing um knowledge uh, mr carmack tennyson haywire um uh, like it's been so great to watch all of these people do their thing on Twitch and like see so many people sharing their their workflow, their setups, having like these B challenges and all of that. Um, yeah, if you have like any suggestions for B challenges or what you'd like to see on stream, please drop them uh, in the Discord. Um, and I'll try. We'll like take notes on what people are like asking for and try to make it. I, I think like I definitely want to have like one or two streams in the month that are special and that are like not about necessarily like purely beat making or that have like a twist to it. So I guess you guys could like I was thinking about like, you guys could send me like mouth samples or random weird nature <laughs> noises and I have like to make a full beat from those noises. So I know like uh I don't actually know your real name, but Cow Go Moo in the Discord sent me like a bunch of cow samples. Uh, <laughs> so like I guess like for the first half or the second half of like Thursday streams, I'm I can definitely make a cow beat where every synth, every percussion, every sound needs to be made from <laughs> the cow sample. It's like it can be a pretty cool challenge. Maybe it'll be horrible, but at least I'll try. And maybe like not dedicate a full stream to that, but <laughs> at least mess around with that. I think that'll be cool. Sound design tips and tricks would be so dope. Yeah, I can I can definitely go into that. And if there's like any patch that you, I'm using, you're curious about, I can definitely explain it. There's a lot of OBXD to like sort of highlight the the, the pack I made for you guys today, um, and it's it's very nice to you. So feel free more cow beat. Uh, feel free to like just ask questions uh, regarding any of that. Da 
second time. The joys of MIDI. I'm sure every producer can relate to this where your sustain pedal message gets stuck and then whatever you play back is like all muddy. I think it's the thing I hate most about <laughs> working with MIDI, but obviously there's so many benefits like for editing and stuff. MC Bovine, baby. <laughs> uh. So obviously you're making embellishments on the current progression. What's on your mind right now? Where is your focus? Is it just messing around? Yeah, I guess like, so I, I have my, the, the start of the riff is here. I have the top line and I'm trying to make it into like this work on this eight bar section. Um, and then I'm going to layer stuff on top of this and try to make slight variations for the section that follows and maybe the one after that. I don't know how, like how many sections this idea will be developed over, but uh, that's pretty much it. Over. Oh yes, the emojis work, dude, I'm so happy. They were like waiting to be approved, but Robin, thank you for using those. There's a bunch of really cool ones in, in the Discord too, uh, but I think <laughs> that one is my favorite. Media is a, is a lifesaver, yeah. 
it's a lifesaver but at the same time like working in audio is very nice for certain things too like controlling your reverb tails or you know for making really cool effects um both have their their benefits you know Yeah, also like nailing the, the feel. I'm making sure that like this is, I want it to be in terms of like rhythmic placement and all, how late it is, how rushed it is. And there's like that sweet pot where you like, you oscillate between the two, which is very fun. Oh, with the purple flames. Woo! Man, I wish I could do my explosion right now. Can I do my explosion? The explosion. And the applause for the purple flames. Explosion on the beat drop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a perfect way to start a beat. Alright, percussion. That's a surprisingly good tone. <laughs> when it works, mouth percussion is so cool and it's so quick to lay down. Oh, I didn't have the claps on the second half. That's why it was, it was hitting a, a little bit less harder. <laughs> That's so funny. I've never used this specific mouth texture before. That rhythmic separation, air horn, ah, oh, dude. I'm gonna add an air horn to my stream shortcuts. I don't currently have one. That rhythmic separation between the hands a little after the dude. So. Oh yeah, the, yeah, it kind of doubles like the, the snare pattern. Frequency shifter. It does wonders. Like this is a, a mouth break, but it sounds like something else. <laughs> Air horn plays before a very chill beat. Yes, dude.
Hey, where's my piano? Interesting. Okay. Okay, I'll just restart it. There you go. Come back to the intro later. actually need to <laughs> relearn the chords I used. Your technique fascinates me. Oh, dude, well, it, it means a lot. Um, I, I guess like most of the technique stuff I got from the early classical training, at first, like as, as far as like just overall dexterity goes, but um, it I, I improved upon it like a lot uh, during jazz school, but I don't know, like technique is, is uh, definitely like a, a very useful tool and it, it facilitates many aspects of the um, like recording process as far as like playing goes, but I've been like much more fascinated by the actual layering. Like I, I'm definitely like a keyboardist and an instrumentalist, but uh, I I think I'm much more like a, an arranger at heart, if that makes sense. Um, I, when the stream started, I, I told you guys like, this was like to make a contrast between what you see on stream and online where everything I post is very like prepared and arranged. It's, it's just, it's something like, I think that's what Anomaly is. Like if, if, if it wasn't for that, um, like some artists are more like improv driven, which is t to me is like absolutely amazing. It's it's so cool. Um, but but for me, like it's all about uh, arrangement. If that makes sense. Will this be available as a VOD? What, what's I'm sorry, I'm such an uncle. What's a VOD? <laughs> Can you show us your Oscar Keyscape patch in the process added later? Yes. Um. So I just have like a couple. Keyscape presets that I start with, but I, I think I mentioned this on the first stream. Um, it, it's really about like the, the chain of effects that you use afterwards or a video on demand. Um, yeah, so subs get access to um, the full stream after the fact. And then I make like these really short, um, just recap clips uh, for anyone to, to see. And uh, some of these like Twitch uh, streams, that the ideas that I start here will like, 
all develop into like short jams to, to share elsewhere online. And then eventually maybe some of these will like be part of, be a part of like certain releases and stuff. Um, and the Oscar patch. Yeah, sorry. I'm so, I'm so confused. Uh, it's all good. So um, in Keyscape itself, like uh, and any sampler for that matter. So you, here you have color shift which uh, in certain, I guess like I can show you like in the, so here my, the the Moog base is an actual sample from a patch I made on a, a friend's Moog. And if you go, this is one sample, so so it doesn't work, but you have a zone shift here that you can adjust by certain amounts and it'll be more pronounced the more samples you have in your sample instrument. Where let's say you have like six or eight samples on the, the range of a keyboard for your sample instrument. And like say like one of those samples is like C, the middle C. It'll be used for like whatever you determine to be. Most instruments will use it like for I don't know like a sixth or an octave or maybe. And then each octave will have its its, its uh, own note. Um, for Keyscape, I, I don't know like how many samples you're using, but it's huge because it's it's so like precise and close to the actual instrument. But if you use color shift, you're basically slightly shifting those samples. So like instead of having the C sample or the C sam samples uh, in a plural for that one note, you'll be using like, if you're going towards the left, you're using a higher sample so that it feels more like warm and closed, like if it was sl slightly slowed down. And then the same for the other way around. And that's a really cool tool uh, to use. I do it very often on some of like the Ableton sam sampler. Um, patches I have, it's obviously a technique you can use with like contact or the EXS uh, 24 in logic. And then uh, reverb, the, the built-in one is very good, um, but I can mess around with like a Valhalla or the native Ampleton ones. Your room, you can basically treat as if it was like an actual audio recording. I like to like process it as if it was a recording. I very often use um, the RC20 as well. And then EQing. So I'm keeping the EQ off for this one, but the high boost is pretty cool, like at the 16, 16K range, because you get like that uh, like room noise or like just background mic noise, which can be pretty pleasing in, in certain contexts. Uh, I usually use this EQ for that because it sounds really good. Uh, but for just overall EQing, I'll just bring it in Ableton and EQ it there. Um, compression and tape. The Omnisphere and Keyscape tape sounds really, really good. Uh, I think like without it, it it's like almost like a different uh, instrument. It's really good. It has a lot of warmth and you can remove some of the, the highs with the, the age setting here. But like it's it's basically like a really good preamp, which is very, very nice. Um, and then tweak. Tweak is like a very cool section to mess around with. And a lot of people that get Keyscape don't really mess around with it when they should. So it's basically your release time and release transition. So the time it takes for the release sample to actually kick in, I think by default, it was close to this value. So I'm, I'm at like 78 uh, milliseconds, sometimes 80. This is what I personally like. Uh, but some people that were used to like workstations um, that are used to like a, a longer release time uh, were a bit scared by that. They said it was like too short. So you can mess around with it here and make it sound like you will. Um, I hope that answers your Oscar preset question. Thank you. 
Thank you for subscribing. 360. Uh, this is so much fun when I did something I thought was cool, but then I don't remember what it was. All right, chromatic. Thank you for subscribing, Brain Tan. Head bopping like there's no tomorrow. Woohoo! Flute layer. <laughs> Were you there on the first stream? I started the first stream with like uh, playing the Titanic on the on the recorder. Hey, Kilimanzago, make some noise for Kilimanzago, please. Wait a second. What a legend! What a legend! Everyone, make some noise for Kilimanzago. Uh, the main synth I'm using here. There's the the Juno for uh, for like the hell textures in the upper reg uh, register, and then uh, the main riff is uh, an OBXD. Uh, patch. Yeah, thank you for subscribing. Yep, Hardware Juno just right there behind me. <laughs> Was that what you were hearing with the with the flute when you had that in mind? What's your A is your B? Yes. Sure is very nice. You ever think about vocals, singing? Uh, I like what you did in the future with Sanhol. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I don't really, I mean, I did like these octave runs. I'll do like pads and that sort of thing and heavily tune it because I'm rarely like perfectly in tune. Um, I wouldn't really <laughs> consider uh, myself a singer, but 
uh, a lot of vocalists collabs coming on the on the next uh, LP project. And there's a project dropping uh, the first week of December, which is all vocal tunes, which should be very very fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like I I think like vocals or like just the voice is like the best instrument there is. Uh, I'm just like not super on point for using it, but I'll definitely make textures with it. Um, yes, the recorder, dude. I mean, yes. <laughs> no, I, I want to, I, I'll maybe use like an actual flute sample. You're right, that's a good idea. Dude, that would be pretty legendary, whipping out the recorder during <laughs> a live show. Hmm. <laughs> Yo, thank you for subscribing, Charles. Subtle variation for the right channel. Or clarinet, yes. I play, so I sort of play the clarinet. I I did use it for live shows because there's this one track up the off the second EP that uses it. But I'm kind of scared to go back to it. But I could definitely explore it for textures, drums, drums. What's your questions? What's your question, bear? You want to know uh, what I'm using for drums? Drums? Uh, Madison was it? Yes, drums. Uh, yeah, Madison had this whole um, section with like trombones and trumpets and clarinets and flutes and that sort of thing. Only the clarinet was real. Uh, I wonder if drums, bruh. What a deep question. It's all right, for real. I'm not insulting you. You can ask <laughs> any question you want. Yes, I can show you the drums I'm I'm using. How does how do you drum? Uh, I so I showed it a little bit early. I'll do it really quick. I'm using addictive drums, um, for like the kick, uh, the like um, mallet snares, the hats. Um, I make like a bunch of kits in that. Stack it with the drum rack, and then in the drum rack I have like the clap sample, a roll, percussion like like this if I need it. And uh, and that goes, I can treat it like separately in all of these channels. I have like a lot of spring reverbs here using the uh, Max for Life convolution. Yeah, so you need like, you yes, bought that recently, only could afford a few kits. You need to wait for like the the sales. Like they, they sell like a bunch of kits at the same time. It's, it's really good. Like 
around Christmas time, I think that's where I got like every kit they make because it's really, really cool. Tell us that, that, that kit, um, uh, I don't know what like their policies on that. Like, uh, I, I definitely can't sell it like, like this out of the blue, but I, I don't know if like they have artists release presets through them. Cause I mean, they have like all the, the merit of like the recording and their, their actual, like the, the pieces that, they, that they use. So like, I don't know, it maybe, maybe like one day they, they would allow that. I can definitely try to hit them up. Um, Ways doing the most with plugins on Black Friday. Yes, they they have like a lot of really um really cool sales. All right, we, we were talking about the, the flute. Let's. Hmm. I have the montage one. I think that's pretty good. Oh wait, wait. This this patch is actually pretty cool. I, I just want to see if I can lay it in before I, I forget and just write down what it is. Thank you. 
Definitely second half. Oh. No big crush on a master, dude. What the hell? <laughs> no big crush on a master. I mean, there are no rules, but no big crush on a master. Um, definitely saturation on on a on a master though. Very very nice. Glitch DB on the master. <laughs> Five bit crushers, dude. Yes, that's the way to go. If you had a string section in this song, how would you, uh, in this song, how would you approach it? Oh, dude, um, no idea. I'm not currently <laughs> hearing strings over this one. Maybe for a break, um, but I uh, will definitely answer your question uh, once I use strings on stream. Because right out of the blue, uh, out of the blue, I, I'm sorry, I don't have like a a good answer for you. But I'll come back to it. I promise. <laughs> Holy shit. Dude, thank you so much for the gifted subs, Craig. What a legend, dude. Please make some noise for Craig, dude, and the gifted Bruh. subs. I meant to do an explosion. <laughs> Woo -hoo! What a legend, dude. Thank you so much, Craig. Dude, thank you. You're a legend.
Just jamming. I don't know if like the piano actually has its place in this context, but at least it's fun to get stuff out of there. It liberates, you know? All right, what time is it? I, I might, uh, I might start an, a new idea now. I'll listen to it once more and see what's up. If I hear something else for a moment, if not, I'll switch to a new one. Hey, thank you so much to Ambulance Lot and Glacier. I actually, oh, Glacier, you were in the stream uh, before. Actually, I didn't even make the connection. Thank you so much for coming, man. And thank you for subscribing, both of you. All right. Um, I will save this. and make a new idea for now. All right, let's save this. Thank you, Craig. And thank you so much for the gift of subs again. Amazing. Idea four, two, and go. How do you balance being a producer as well as, con as a consumer musically, like participating as both? Thank you for subscribing, Hugo. Um, like participating as both a creator and as a fan to someone else. Um, I I'm not sure what you mean. Like, let's say like being a fan of another artist that I listen to and managing, listening to him with creating stuff. So, sorry, I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I, I follow. Idea two. No problem, man. I'll be waiting. Also hydrate. Yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm dating the, the, the folders. I'm, I'm putting dates on the, the folders specifically for the, for the Twitch projects. <laughs> um, I'm not like that organized uh, in real life, but for for the streams projects, I I definitely want to like, if I develop an idea further, let's say over the weekend, which I did for one of the idea of the Thursday stream, I just want to like connect it to that stream so I can go over the recap and and stuff, or like include bits of the stream in like a, a video or something. It can be pretty cool, you know. Gotta keep it organized. Transcribe. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, I mean, yes, transcriptions, but specifically how to transcribe because I, I know transcribe is like the answer everybody gives. Uh, but to increase your vocab, like 
I'll, I like to like isolate a line or, or a chord or a specific voicing. And then I'll like, uh, take that voicing or line makes, uh, if it's a line, like make, um, uh, small variations from that. Um, and, um, and play them in all keys over different tempos. If it's like a, uh, uh, an actual voicing, I actually took this from uh, JVPO, uh, an amazing keyboardist and legend. Um, you take that voicing. Let's say it's like this. And then you like get a melody and you play that melody with the same voicing everyone. And you take that voicing and you go uh, with it. I actually made a major minor variation here, but you take that voicing and you use it over several melodies. It could be like old McDonald had a farm or like a very simple melody. And then that really develops um, like your muscle memory to like use that voicing anywhere on the keyboard in any context. I, I thought it was like really brilliant, a really brilliant way to approach it. So I, I definitely use that exercise from him. Um, but yeah, any anything that you isolate from your transcription is like, it's it's good to like transcribe the whole thing. But then if you want to actually integrate it, you can find like these snippets and play it in different contexts and all keys over different beats. Um, and then it actually becomes a part of your own language. Old MacDonald slaps. Yes, it slaps. What what a theme. What a melody. Holy shit. Uh, I tend to connect voicings to one exact chord, which is which is limiting me a lot. I mean, one you can vamp on one chord and make so many variations like you know this is all like within the world of, of g major but inversions are so powerful you can use like you don't have to use like six million voices on a chord to make it cool. If if you do, I'm very happy for you. That's wonderful. But it's all about, at least for me, all, all I'm saying can totally be bullshit. It, it's okay. I'm just saying my, <laughs> I, I don't mean it's okay. I'm saying that like, it's my opinion. So do whatever you want with it. You can say it's bullshit. Um, but I'm basically saying that I'd rather use harmony uh, in service of the melody or for transitions and stuff and just so that it makes sense and leads to something as opposed to like saying all right today i want to use uh p minor sharp 14 uh flat 17 just because that's something i want i want to like introduce in, in my songs uh but that being said i think that limiting yourself uh like the amount of options that you can use in your creation is also very cool uh because you can create something unexpected out of limiting your available choices. Personally, I've had the balance being a public school music teacher with creating and being my own musician. I was just wondering if you sometimes felt the same way as someone who creates and also support. Uh, do, of course. I will definitely like disconnect from uh, being in creative mode and like 100% being a, a fan of a specific artist that I like and just like, um, you know, like being totally amazed by whatever's going on uh, production wise, music wise, lyrically, melody wise in that song. Um, it's definitely something I think that's important, like trying to take a distance from, um, or like a step back from whatever you're creating and going to listen to other songs. Uh, thank you for the shoes. Dude, thank you so much to everybody who's here. It means so much. Uh, favorite jazz pianist to transcribe. I, I really like transcribing Oscar, Oscar Peterson. I think I know, dude. P uh, flat 17 sharp four is one hell of a chord. Oscar Peterson is the goat dude. And he's from Montreal too. So I have like this biased um, reason for liking him even more. Um, I think like he's the continuation of Art Tatum where like Art Tatum is so ahead of his time that like he's on uh, many aspects, he is unmatched to this day. But I think that Oscar takes some elements from art in um in certain aspects of his playing the the virtuosity is one that we can refer to easily but he brings it in a lot of other different directions and he's also from old videos that i saw of him um he's also able to like 
melodically clo- a quote other pianists on the fly. He has like a very wide knowledge of, of the whole culture, instrument, and music um, history. So I guess like Oscar, Art Tatum, if you're very brave and courageous, I usually like just give up uh, after a few bars because it's, it's um, in most cases, it feels like it's two pianists like playing at the same time, but it's one guy. Uh, and that's like, I'm usually like really inspired when I, I hear someone who's really good and I'm like, wow, I, I, I want to practice. When I, when I hear Art Tatum, I'm amazed and in awe but uh, I don't like want to work on it too much because I, I get really discouraged. And yes, Bill, Bill uh, on the harmony movement, definitely a legend. So wait, so we have Oscar, Art Tatum. I, I said like sometimes, but sometimes it's very hard. Uh, Bill, of course. Uh, Dave Grusin. I really love Dave Grusin. Uh, a lot of like the soundtracks he made for cinema and his roads playing is absolutely gorgeous. And uh, I will end with Corey Henry because I think uh, he's one of the main legends from uh, this era. Garland, of sure, of course, is a is a legend, but I think Corey is like the 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 synth playing and the organ playing is like out of this world. And I'll add uh, Herbie Hancock too to other legends to transcribe. Oh yeah. Okay, let me clean this up. Is this? The second idea project, yes, it is. So uh, don't worry, I'm not deleting the first one. This is the second project. The first idea is saved separately. We're all good. Good. I'm actually going to take a two minute break to open some windows because it's getting uh, very hot in here. Um, and I'll be right back to make a second idea or about like 40 minutes or something. I'll be back. Actually, if my shortcut <laughs> ends up working. Just had to open the window, get some fresh air. And leaving the, the door open kind of helps. It's crazy, like even it's it's like, it's getting like really like, we're getting like cold autumn, fall temperature here. And it still gets crazy hot in the in the music room. I It, it kind of eludes me, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, sample kick.
Uh, if it's on the reg, if I use it often. Yeah, I guess that the headphones, um, the, the headphones definitely contribute to, to me, uh, needing some, some, uh, re refreshing air. Oh, how much is it? I'm, I'm not fully sure. Um, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's really worth it to to wait for the the sales that they have uh, around the holidays to to just cop like a bunch of of different kits and um, the kits are really good. There's a there's a lot of good presets, but I I really recommend making your own presets from just the different kit, kit pieces that you have. So many snares, hats, symbols, toms, really really cool stuff. Oh, because it's coming out in snare here. Okay. Got it, got it. How do y'all have always, how do you always have push already program for having drums part on the same pads? Um, so I have like this uh, preset where I have like the addictive and the drum rack are grouped and I, I make like all my color coding in advance. Um, and then basically like the addictive layout is always the same and I can just drop the drum rack 
um, either substitutions like replacing, I'll mute the, the, the addictive kick and then drop my kick sample in this slot. And then I can add other ones if I, if I want here. So this is a snare uh, and the first idea was a clap. I'll usually have like a perk here and a little roll there. Toms are blue. It's just like very much easier to navigate once I load it. I can like customize the sound, but it kind of feels the same uh, whenever I want to re record them. Oh yeah. Hey man, I made music for 10 years and a while ago I was about to stop. Then I heard Odyssey and it made me feel as a teenager rediscovering music again. It's probably me. So, ah, uh, thank you so much, man. That's, that's so, it's, it, it really means so much, but it's at the same time, it's a little bit funny to me because Odyssey feels like another era. It's like the, the first track that kind of led to the stylistic uh, direction of Metropole After. But I'm, I'm really happy that it, it did it for, it did that for you. Thank you so much. Nico, when does one tune their drums and when not to? Um, like, like uh, I, I have no idea how to uh, tune real drums. That's Anthony's thing <laughs> on the live side, uh, the, the live aspect. But for production, I guess like, do you mean like tuning, just messing around with the, the pitch or tuning it to whatever key you're in? Um, yeah, well, the, the kick uh, for, 80, for 808, sort of like a, a kick that has a very specific note, yeah, you definitely can, but in most cases, my kicks don't have like a very cl a clear note or tone. I'll use the bass for that and then use sidechain to make it clear, but I mean, for percussion, I, I usually like tune almost everything so that it's like the fifth or the, or the, or the root. And so make it make sense. But for like snares that don't have like a, a clear uh, tonality, um, I guess like whatever feels appropriate for uh, for the song, uh, making it higher to make it a little bit more snappy or low to make it, you know, have that certain mood. I think there are no right answers here, but I, I usually pretty often mess around with tuning, but I don't know. I, I, I guess I don't have a clear answer for you. Thank you for subscribing, Tom Sita. Is there a reason why some of your tunes are at uh, 450? Not really. Um, it varies. There's some at 432 or in between. Um, which left Robin? Sorry. Um, I guess like I sometimes I, I come up with an idea and then I tune it up or down and it 
each like you know like how each key has a different feel i guess like tunings like something that's tuned slightly higher or lower can also dramatically um or subtly uh affect like the mood uh, of the track that you're working in so i guess i like messing around with that and then it's i know it's kind of weird i think rob uh told me he had the same uh feeling where like when you're playing the piano rows or synth and it's like you're so used to playing it at 440 and then you you uh tune it in a, a different tuning it feels like you're like being in the audience or witnessing what's going on as well as playing it i don't know like it it, it does that for me sometimes it, it's it's like a weird feeling or like if it's not in real time i'll record something and then i play it back in a different tuning and i feel like i'm not listening to myself and it it makes me make or take decisions that are maybe not the ones i would necessarily take if it if it wasn't the same i don't know it's extremely uh right here in my head but it, it feels uh it feels good you know sometimes to like just create a sense of perspective if that makes sense For how long have you been playing piano as soon as he got out of the womb? <laughs> um, uh, so I, my mom is a piano teacher. I started uh, messing around uh, on the instrument when I was a bambino. I don't know, like uh, maybe four or five, but I got like a, a dedicated teacher at, uh, that wasn't my mom at seven. Yes, RC20 all the way. What was that bass patch? Oh, the bass patch. It's a it's a sampler patch. I uh, I got this release coming up with uh, some legends called Chromio, an amazing funk duo. And when I was at, at their studio space in LA, uh, they had it was like a, a paradise for uh, hardware synths. And um, I I made like some samples from some of the patches I made there. So this is from um, uh, it's from a Moog bass. Uh, 
No, I, I'm French. I'm I'm not Italian. I'm I'm a um, French Canadian. I just like the word bambino. Uh, but yeah, I made a uh, the sample patch from that Moog bass from Necromio project. Okay, you're Italian. Much love. Much love, dude. Oh, Italian's in the place. What's up? Grazie mille. At what moment did you decide to go into electronic music? I suppose you're a class like you trained. Uh, it was like very progressive. I, I mean, I, I obviously loved the piano as an instrument. Loved my teacher growing up. But um, never been a fan of like that... Um, the scene that uh, at least what I was experiencing, I know there's so many uh, amazing musicians in the, in the classical world as well, but I guess I, I did like contests and stuff and I thought that people were cold and I didn't like, that was my experience obviously. Um, and I did not like the fact that I, I could not like improvise or like try to mess around the chords and stuff. Robin, c'est pas français, mais non. Wow. Mind blown. Um, and I guess like I started production producing sort of through a garage band in high school um, and went to jazz progressively throughout high school. So I was introduced to like R&B, funk and also jazz fusion like when I was like uh, during the last years of high school and went like full on um, in the years that followed. I'm just going to lay down some bass and go back to your questions before I forget this line. Sorry, guys. It will just be two minutes. All right, two notes. I like this. Gonna try to get some cool harmonic movements over this. That's cool when there's like not too many notes. There's space for it. Vous êtes tous français, mais non, French people in the place. Okay, dude, I'm I'm mind blown. That's crazy. Uh, will you ever do a feedback stream? Uh, dude, I could definitely do a feedback stream. Um, I think for the moment, I want to keep the the next couple of ones like very beat making focused, um, and have like a, a challenge of some sort. So if you have recommendations, feel free to drop them in the suggestion box in the Discord server which I will drop right now. Uh, but yeah, if you guys are many to ask for it, I, I can definitely consider that as well. Uh, it's the best day of your life. Dude, no problem. It's it's all good. I'm very happy to see a lot of uh, French people here. Oh, Hugo C. Hugo's French too. Everybody's French. Such a party. Rhodes or synth? Maybe Rhodes. Sweet. 
English, French. Yes. Damn, I wish my keyscape sounded that good. Seems to overpower my very good. Oh, interesting. My laptop is like not, not like that much of a beast. Um, I'm definitely gonna go, my next upgrade is gonna be like mini computers, but I, I don't know which one exactly. If you guys wanna exchange um, computer stuff, we can definitely do that in the Gear Talk channel in uh, Discord. Favorite hardware synth? Um, I mean, I really like the Juno. Uh, it's the one I have here. If I could afford, if I could afford it, I'd get um, I'd get a Mini Moog Model D. But holy shit, it's like twelve USD grand on <laughs> on eBay. Um, and the re-edition, the new edition is like a bit cheaper. But even then, um, I think next synth is gonna be like the um, the Behringer clone. I forgot the name. Um, other than that, I, I kind of like the Reface. It's not the best synth in the world, but it's very convenient to use. It's small. It's portable. There's some built-in effects. It's cool. Um, I I like the Prophet synths. Uh, obviously, every model is a very different one from another. I'm not like that familiar with them because I've just messed a couple of times with them on other people's boards. But... Um, yeah, I think it needs to be the mini mock, dude, but uh, I don't have it. It's it's too expensive. Uh, do you think Mac is better than Windows? Uh, I'm not going to get into this, dude, but let's let's bring it to to the Discord. <laughs> Thank you. 
not sure if I want to bring it high up or middle. I was doing high up but really short earlier. I'll just keep this here for now. Yeah, with high, short, with spring. Make anomaly midi pack, dude. There is already a midi pack. If you wanna, if you become a Twitch subscriber, you get 15 OBXD presets, 15 riffs, and 15 midi files. And there's a new one every month. Oh, <laughs> uh, and in the Discord, uh, once you've subbed and you can download it, I've been using the OBXD. <laughs> Thank you, bro. I've been using those uh, patches in the first idea earlier. Um, so you get 15 patches, uh, a loop for uh, every one of those patches and a mini file for every one of those loops. Um, and then you guys can ask me if there's a specific synth you want to get presets for, for the next pack. Um, I think I'm going to prioritize ones that a lot of people have or that are free, like the OBXT. Uh, but if there's enough demand for one, I will, uh, prioritize that one. Explosion. All right. I'm going to lay down, uh, maybe some clav or something. And I think that will be it for me today. I am extremely hungry.
For the OBX, no, it is not the Arturia one. It's a uh, OBXD made by uh, wait, what's the name? It's it's a small indie developer and it's free. Um, it's called the OBXD and it's inspired by the Oberheim uh, OBX. So <laughs> much love, everyone. Disco DSP. There you go. Thank you, Hugo. Uh, so it's it's a free synth, but um, there's um an optional fifty dollars price tag, which I really r recommend doing. Um. If you're down, because it's it's a really really great synth. <laughs> Yeah, it's fair. You're right. It's it's kind of a Halloween vibe. <laughs> Spooky toot. the old one not good okay we're good all right my mind is getting a little bit uh confused All right, uh, that will be it for today, guys. Thank you so much to everyone who tuned in and everyone who subscribed or interacted or any <laughs> anomaly goosebumps mix. Yes, yes, dude. Um, but yeah, thank you so much to everyone. Uh, please uh, feel free to head to the Discord. Lots of fun. Uh, I will be hanging in the Discord for a bit right after the stream. If there's a question you ask and I didn't answer, please feel free to hit me up there. Um, or you can also, we can also go over 
uh, something specific or tell me uh, how spooky this beat was. And um, yeah, so please, uh, if, you, if you have time ahead of you, please uh, stay around while the ending stream is playing because I'm going to find a uh, channel to raid. So thank you so much for coming and see you on Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. See ya, everyone.